Bhagavatasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambundasa. Hi everyone, welcome to Dharma Earth's Dose of Dharma, and this is your Dose of Dharma for today. Today we shall go deeper into the blessings of much learning, because from the previous talk we understand that much learning refers to the retention in the memory of the Buddha's teaching and also retention of memory and much learning eh, in secular subjects also like medicine and biology. When they are blameless, then it is considered a blessing. So one thing that we talk about for much learning is memory. So how do you improve your memory with Buddha's teachings? I guess this is quite an interesting topic. So yeah, just to elaborate a little bit on this so that everyone can understand and master how to improve your memory with Buddha's teachings, okay? So first, in the Buddha's teachings, according to practice, okay? What are the factors that affect memory? Well, there's the good and there's the bad. Eh? There's the ugly. So what are the good what are the factors that are good, uh, that are wholesome, uh, that affects memory? Well, basically, we can say that mindfulness is one of the most important factor when we are trying to improve our memory uh, with Buddha's teachings. Okay, What are factors that are bad, that are unwholesome, that affects the memory? Well, basically, generally, all defilements like that. But we shall go in much more into that. Okay, So, Cultivating strong mindfulness is very, very important and essential when we want to improve our memory. Why? Because the characteristics of mindfulness is to remember. So if we always train our mind eh, to always remember and remember and remember, then the mind will be trained. And as you do that, then you develop strong mindfulness. Hmm? So here, in actual practice, in actual practice, for example, some meditators find that before they practice meditation, their memory was not so good. But after they practice meditation, they found that their memory became better. They can remember things from a long time ago. Why is that so? Well, actually, one of the most important factors is because of the cultivation of strong mindfulness. So, you may ask, then how do we cultivate strong mindfulness in daily life? Well, that is, if we have a Dharma team or certain spiritual quality that we wish to develop during our daily lives, then if we keep remembering it, remembering it, for example, loving kindness, if you want to be a loving person, then from the time you wake up until the time you sleep, whenever we are free, then we always try to let the mind eh, abide in sending the blessings of loving kindness to ourselves and to the whole world. And as we continue to do this again and again, again and again, again and again, again and again, when we do this, wholesome mind, wholesome mental factors, wholesome qualities are being cultivated and developed. Whereas defilements and destruction, all the distracting thoughts, they are replaced by all these wholesome mind states and wholesome qualities. Right? So if we can do it throughout the day, from the time you wake up until the time you sleep, whenever we have time, then we always let the mind go back to your meditation subject, go back to, your, to the spiritual quality that you want to develop. For example, contentment, and we can think of, oh, contentment is so good, contentment is so good, like that. Eh? Or for example, if you want to cultivate gratitude, then you can think, oh, gratitude, oh, I'm grateful for all the things I have today. I'm grateful for all the help that people has given to me today. I'm grateful and thankful to the sky, to the beautiful flowers for bringing up my spirits for the day, you know. So when we always try to keep our mind in wholesome mind states and especially if you have like a certain dharma team or dharma 
a subject or a certain spiritual quality that you wish to develop. And whenever you have time, your mind goes back to that. And then through this kind of a practice, we cultivate strong mindfulness. For the meditator, as meditators, they are trained to always abide with their meditation subject from the time they wake up until the time they sleep, no matter whether they are going to the toilet, whether they are sweeping the floor, whether they are walking around, standing around, etc. In order for the meditation to develop, they always try to do this. You know? So that is why it is very, very important for the meditators and also for the non-meditators to develop this kind of mental habit. If they can develop this, then uh, with strong mindfulness and the memory uh, definitely will become better. There's one living example, which is one of my most respected teachers, Most Venerable Arida Mamahatero. So before, there was one time where he needed to study uh, one very big topic of Buddhism, which is in the Abhidhamma, it's called the Patana. It's very, very thick and very, very complex treaties and knowledge of the Abhidhamma. So before uh, the Mahatera started to learn, the Mahatera went on a retreat for, I think it was like 21 days or 3 months. Then after that, after he cultivated strong mindfulness from the meditation retreat, ah, then Mahatera started to study and memorize and started to uh, learn about the Patana. You know? So even strong meditators like Mahatera, they had to go for retreats to build up their mindfulness and all the wholesome qualities of the mind before they embark uh, on studying. So what more about us, right? Of course, as people living uh, in the, the society, we can just do what we can, right? Because everyone is so busy. So that was why I talked about cultivating the gorilla type of mindfulness, which is to always, after an hour of work, okay, try to close your eyes and relax and try to remember your meditation subject or dharma team or dharma quality or even a stanza in the Dhamma that you wish to understand and cultivate or that inspire you, uh, like that. So with this, as you do it again and again and again and again, then ultimately mindfulness will be cultivated. And with strong mindfulness, the memory will be improved. So this is one of the factors that can help to improve memory using the Buddha's teaching, which is to cultivate strong mindfulness. Hmm? Okay, and so... This is the dose of Dharma for today. So I hope the sharing has been helpful to all of you. Has given everyone some idea on how to improve uh, the memory with Buddha's teachings. And so may the Triple Gem bless all of us to be well, peaceful and happy. And may all of us be able to attain path, fruition and Nibbana as soon as possible. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.